This is a story told to me by Jamshid. I have illustrated it with images from our combined imaginations. There were once two young friends born in the same village. They grew up together amid beautiful surroundings. Their village was in the mountains, and it was here that they learned to weave carpets. As they came of adult age, their country was swept up in turmoil. An oppressive regime provoked a resistance movement in which they both found purpose and inspiration. They went down out of the mountain and into the city, and the love they shared as children matured into something romantic, intellectual, and unconditional. In making plans for the future of their country, they saw life together, a rich garden of diversity and symbiotic growth where they could grow strong with love and caring. One by one, however, their friends were arrested and taken away to prisons. Eventually, they too were taken away, separated. The young woman thought of nothing but her love during her time in prison. Dreams of their future nourished her, and she found the strength to survive her time. Upon her release, she searched for her lover, but no one knew of his whereabouts. She expected to see his face everywhere. She would think she heard his voice in the market or on the stairs to her attic apartment, and her heart would swell with hope, only to be broken again and again. And only in her loneliest and most desperate moments could she let herself acknowledge the reality. This was that he had been executed, hanged, his body lying under the ground somewhere with hundreds of others. Little by little. She retreated into the past, into her head, in order to survive, protecting her heart and her spirit from being broken forever. At first, it was daydreams in the idle parts of her afternoons. More and more, to keep the hardness of reality away, she retreated to her imagination. People looked at her strangely in the street because she seemed to be talking to someone they couldn't see. She lost her employment and alienated her friends and family. Eventually, she returned to her native village, to the house she'd grown up in, to pass the last years of her life. There, she did the work she had done so many years ago. She took to the loom and wove the most beautiful carpets. In this work, she could let her mind wander. One day, as she had the pattern read to her, she disappeared completely to that place in her mind, and she stayed there. When the pattern reader looked to see the work she had done, he saw a face instead of the pattern he had dictated. Starting with the eyes, it was the face of her lover. In Farsi, the word for the gallows where prisoners are hanged is the same as that for a loom on which carpets are woven. The shape of the gallows, when turned upside down, resembles the shape of a loom. But while the ropes on the gallows take life away, the threads of a loom are a way to pass down stories and traditions to the next generation. To turn gallows into looms, to turn a life-taking tool into one which gives life, is what we should strive for.